when the president gives the order, it must be followed. There's about four minutes between the order being given and the people responsible for launching nuclear weapons to do so. So uh, apparently Hillary Clinton is not only a security risk in terms of her emails, right there during the final presidential debate, she may have given away some sensitive information about our uh, nuclear deterrence, we'll call it. For more on this, as well as Vladimir Putin preparing to launch new attacks on Syria and the latest in Iraq, we're pleased to be joined now by former CIA analyst and now a senior vice president for policy and programs of the Center for Security Policy. It's our friend Fred Flights. Now, Fred, obviously, you can neither confirm nor deny the time involved, but Hillary... Uh, saying what she said the other night that we just heard. Is there any rationale for that kind of statement? Uh, good to be here, J.D. Well, let's first keep in mind that Hillary Clinton was on the Armed Services Committee. So if this is true, she would have known it's true. So she, she very, they may very well have violated something classified that she knew was classified. And on this whole nuclear codes thing, it's simply so silly. Donald Trump has been endorsed by over 200 admirals and generals. Uh, I mean, my question is someone who basically sold her job as Secretary of State, why is she uh, qualified to be president and someone who would hold the nuclear codes? Well, let's go to the phones and talk more about uh, the subject of national security and uh, Mrs. Clinton. Uh, first, to Buffalo, New York, where Herb is standing by at 1-877-639-7629. Hi, Herb. Yeah, hi, uh, J.D. Got a question. Uh, uh, all this hacking that's going on and everybody is saying we think it's Russia. We're not sure. And I think the truth is that we really don't know who's doing it and who's responsible. Is it a nation state or is it some bright people sitting with computers? So my point is this, J.D., what we were spending, the American people are spending billions with this NSA organization, giving them the best supercomputers in the world, the capability of, 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 of a worldwide network to tap into phones. Why can't our own NSA say, here, we figured out who is doing all this hacking instead of we just don't know. Well, that's a fair point, Herb. Let's uh, turn, uh, go to Fred Flights, who obviously understands our intelligence gathering as a former CIA analyst. You heard what Herb had to say about the NSA, about our ability with supercomputers. What is going on in your opinion, Fred? Is it really the Russians or is this some sort of political stance that, dare I say it, our intelligence agencies might be a part of with the current regime in charge? These are all great questions from you and from the caller. I wrote in National Review yesterday that what Hillary Clinton said, that 17 U.S. intelligence agencies have determined that Russia is behind this hacking, that's not true. If you read an unclassified memo they put out, only two agencies said that Russia might have been involved, but they didn't really say that. They said the hacking was in the style of what Russia would do. They didn't say they had any, had any evidence of this. And, and I think this has been grossly overstated, and this memo was released for political reasons. Our intelligence agencies, as you know, J.D., are not supposed to be involved in elections. And it was very curious that a memo from, from U.S. intelligence agencies that was so helpful for this campaign came out just before the election. Yeah. I think it was very curious. It's just like, you know, it's like the Federal Bureau of Investigation is supposed to investigate and the Department of Justice is supposed to prosecute. But we're seeing a whole political layer to those organizations we once thought above politics. Let's go back to the phones right now at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629 to the borough of Queens in New York City. Ricardo's on the line. Hi, Ricardo. Do we have Ricardo? All right, we'll try to get him back later. I will tell you this, uh, we do know there is contact, at least uh, somewhere around the English Channel, a Russian attack fleet. We thought at first it uh, might be military, uh, uh, military uh, drills, if you will, but apparently this ship is on its way 
to launch a new attack on Syria. I know our NATO allies and NATO as an organization are watching this uh, naval traffic by Russia very carefully, Fred. What is your assessment of what's going on? Putin wants to reclaim some of the glory of the former Soviet Union. He's establishing naval bases around the world, and this is just uh, an example of what he's doing, to say that Russia is back, it is a global power, it has global reach, and frankly, Russia is going to do whatever it wants to do. It doesn't care about our policy on Syria. Uh, the deterrence uh, is apparently gone with our current commander-in-chief. Now, we've reestablished contact with Ricardo, checking in from Queens. Hi, Ricardo. Hi, how are you doing today? Doing fine, thanks. Good. Um, my question is, um, with all these hacks, all these email allegations against the Democratic Party, what makes us, as the American people, have faith in Hillary Clinton that she will fight for us? It is a question. This whole fitness for office thing, Fred, you, you pointed out the discrepancy between her debate charge and the reality of the assessment from our intelligence agencies. Uh, an indulgent columnist of years ago might have said, look, presidential politics is two-thirds theater, but it does come down to a, to a question of credibility. And as Ricardo points out, he does not believe uh, Secretary Clinton uh, warrants our trust. Well, my reaction w w would be that these uh, emails are revealing things that the news media refuses to report. And I know we're, we're not supposed to talk about them because they're stolen, but the press publishes stuff that's been stolen and leaked all the time. It seems like the press is trying to say, well, we don't count it if it's against the Democrats. But I think this is important information on whether Hillary Clinton can be trusted. And I think it's staggering information that she can't be trusted. Uh, we've got more calls coming in at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629 to Baltimore, Maryland for our next call. I'm sorry, sir, I don't have your Gary, I believe it is. Welcome, Gary. Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, yeah, I, I just uh, want to say about the Democratic uh, campaign that if they are doing such a great job for democracy, if they are, you know, um, <laughs> what, what difference would it make if somebody saw what they were doing behind the scenes in their campaign? It should be transparent. But the fact that they're not doing good things, they're making a big stink about WikiLeaks. You know, Russ who who, who uh, discovered or who hacked them. What difference does that make? If we're doing a good job, and if we're, uh, you know, showing ourselves to be honest, democratic people, then why would, you know, why, what, we, we wouldn't care if somebody, you know, Trump wouldn't care if somebody hacked his campaign because they do a good job. So They're in other words, be it, be, be, America the right way. The notion is, as uh, Mr. Justice Brandeis said, and thanks for the call, Gary, uh, Mr. Justice Brandeis, Fred, said sunlight is the best disinfectant. Now. In terms of an intelligence operation, you don't want the sunlight everywhere on everything because discretion is needed. Yet in a campaign, Gary makes the point, gee, if these guys were up and up and champions of democracy, they wouldn't mind it so much. But he raised something else in transition, the whole specter of WikiLeaks. It is an established talking point from Hillary Clinton on down on the left to say this is something done by the Russians or WikiLeaks is an enemy of the United States. How dare you trust what they say? What about WikiLeaks and uh, uh, the standing of those who would uh, use information in different contexts, perhaps not always in our national interest? I think this raises a lot of questions. I, I will say that, you know, every person has confidential discussions that we don't want released, even good and ethical persons. I don't want people reading all my emails and I'm not doing anything criminal. It's a concern that WikiLeaks is stealing confidential information and leaking it. And Republicans may be rejoicing right now, but when WikiLeaks starts doing this against Republican candidates, I don't think they're going to like it very much. And I think it is a real concern that has to be stopped. But I mean, there's things here that Hillary Clinton should have disclosed that she didn't, like the speech she gave where she said she wants open borders for the United States. We now know why she didn't want to release that speech when Bernie Sanders asked for it. And I'm glad it's out there. I don't care that it was stolen. The American people needed to know this. Fred Flights, we appreciate your time today 
always, your insights and analysis worldwide are most welcome. Let me go back to the phones before the break. Very quickly, Marie in Brooklyn. Marie, you got 30 seconds. Make them count. Okay, thank you for letting me speak, and uh, I watch your show all the time. I just saw on the news that 16 states have machines, voting machines, that are affiliated with Hillary Clinton. You know, and I wonder, is this being investigated? As a matter of fact, what actually is going on, those 16 states have voting machines uh, put together by a company in which George Soros, the financier of the left, has some involvement. It is a question that we will continue to pursue for you, Marie. You're asking the right questions. We'll try to have the answers for you in the days ahead.